Hey guys, welcome to the final week of Life Group for Bottom of the Ninth. I'm here again with Pastor CJ, and we just heard a wild sermon from First Kings, did I get that right? Uh, Elijah and Elisha, and these two have a very unique relationship, and I love to hear you talk about their relationship. Yeah, I love it. You know, they're both, well, they find themselves relating or connecting in a very unique season, you know. One, Elijah, the, the prophet, the established man of God, is coming off of a pretty tough season where we actually find him depressed, on the run, even suicidal. Mm. And then we see him uh, coming across Elisha, who is kind of doing some hard work. He's overlooked. In fact, he's at the back of the line in, in what he's doing. And what is amazing to me about this story is Elijah believes in Elisha. He sees potential and he sees promise in this young man who's blooming where he's planted. But simultaneously, Elisha believes in Elijah. And there's something about this burnt out prophet that is reinvigorated by this young man who says, hey, I'd follow you, trust you, and I believe in you. And I think every single one of us at times can relate to being both Elijah and Elisha, where we all need someone to believe in us. And chances are there's people in your life who you need to express your belief in them. There's something about instilling confidence in one another. And I just wonder who in the room, who gathered with us in this moment, needs someone to believe in you. And first and foremost, you should know that the creator of the heavens of the earth believes in you. I mean, come on, Jesus left perfection for our potential. That's how much he believes in us. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously, every person gathered with us has people in their lives. Chances are many of you, maybe it's a family member, a coworker, a child, whoever it may be, that if you were to instill confidence and let them know you believe in them, it might accelerate something in their life and they may go on to accomplish great things all because they had someone like you in their corner believing in them. And I just, I love that about their story. Yeah, it, it really reminds me of just the season that you've been in with Pastor Steve of just the parallels between those two relationships. So how has that, what has that meant in your life, the relationship that you have with Steve? Yeah, I think it's pretty easy to believe in Steve. Uh, it's pretty astonishing that he believes in me. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm just really humbled by that. And sometimes I, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around it, why the elders believe in me. And even in this season of growing in my relationship with staff, um, their collective buy-in and enthusiastic support uh, at times is just overwhelming. It's, it's hard to get my mind around um, God's goodness and his ability to surround you with people who can help you accomplish the very thing he set you out to do. And so um, it's the ultimate gift. It, it is the ultimate gift and I'm forever grateful for it. Mm -hmm. So there's a practice in this story, if you can remind us what that is. It's, it's not very cultural today, but it's very important for what's happening. Can you share again what that was and why it was important? Yeah, so Elijah throws his cloak onto Elisha. This is basically him bestowing in a sense or hinting at the passing of a mantle. Mm -hmm. And Elisha decides, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow you. And what's amazing is it says he burns his plows, mm -hmm. which was, I mean, his employment, his, his, you know, security and livelihood. And it's amazing because what Elisha is communicating in this moment is there's no plan B. Mm -hmm. Hey, I am, I'm all in. And I sometimes get concerned that a lot of Christians are really partial in their commitment to Christ. Mm -hmm. And I don't think God is holding out on us. I honestly believe that through the cross and what Jesus did on behalf of all of us, God gave all of himself to you and I. I think where we shortchange ourselves is when we refuse to give all of ourselves back to him. And just know that if there's gaps in the relationship, it's not because God's holding out, chances are it's because you're holding out. And I find we miss out when we hold out. And so maybe in this season, you need to burn the plows and maybe you need to stop waffling in your commitment and being so partial and go all in for a God who went all in for you. And I love this idea of burning the plows, no turning back. It kind of reminds me of the, the old hymn. Like I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. And I pray that becomes an anthem and a truth over every single one of your lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like what you said that the Lord is 
like never going to leave us. Like he is giving all of himself. Um, but I think back to the story of there's a whole season of like obscurity yeah. for them, years of it, in fact. And I think it's in those seasons where it can, you can kind of feel abandoned or like God's withholding or something. So what, what's important, I guess, about that season of obs- obscurity and um, how, yeah, how do we know that God hasn't actually left us? Yeah. You know, most times when we read the passage, most people don't factor in the timeline. So when Elisha, you know, chooses to follow Elijah, well, the next time they arrive on the scene, it's eight years later. Mm -hmm. So for eight years, they go off the radar. And I am convinced and tuck this away and maybe, you know, reflect on your own life and how this has been true or may be currently true or going to become true in your life. And that is divine opportunities are almost always preceded with seasons of obscurity. And different than our culture, the kingdom of God elevates and promotes character, not charisma. And sometimes this is a concern and and this is even problematic in the church world. Uh, We really obsess over platforms that are intended for serving, yet somehow we've thought the focus is platforms are there for shining. And I just think God stewards his influence well, and he trusts people who do the hard work of character. And I think private faithfulness Mm -hmm. always precedes public usefulness. Mm -hmm. So just know that God has great plans in store for you, but it might take you through a season of obscurity. And it might take you through a season where you have to hone the private faithfulness in your life before God can trust you with greater levels of public usefulness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that so much. Such a good and important challenge because life, I heard someone say once, life has highs and lows, but the majority is just the middle mundane. (laughs) And if we can learn to be faithful in the middle mundane, then it'll it'll be like that foundation in the highs and the lows, not get a big prideful head when we're up here, but also not be shattered or destroyed in the valley either. Come on, Katie Kroll's Um, out here preaching, (laughs) y'all. Anyways, thank you, Pastor CJ, um, just for the sermon. And uh, this is the last week for life groups, but of course we have next week too. So make sure you join us next week for that. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys later.